And here, um, uh, uh, I want to make a distinction between values and ways of being, or two understandings of culture, where Max Weber is understood as um, culture as a set of values, and Anne Swidler will think of culture as ways of being. These two understandings aren't totally mutually exclusive, but they're two useful ways to think through cultural phenomena. Weber's understanding of culture is thinking about culture as a unified system of values, like moral beliefs and norms. That is how it is that those beliefs are enacted through behavior. And here, what Weber is interested in is how it is that in his version, culture serves as a switchman. Now, a switchman is something many of you have probably not really thought about or heard of before because it's a, it was a, prese- a, a profession or a job that people had back, back, back in the early part of the 20th and late part of the 19th century. A switchman was somebody who um, uh, stood at a switch and pulled that switch. And the pulling of that switch sent um, railroad cars in one direction or another. So railroad cars move on tracks And those tracks can push people in different directions. They can push you towards one city or another city. Today, those tracks are automated. So, you know, there's a way in which as a conductor, you know, you indicate which way you're going and the track switches. So you go on one versus the other. But if you think about this back in the 19th century, it wasn't automated. There was actually someone who pulled the lever and sent you in one direction or another. Now, when Weber thought about culture as a switchman, what he was referring to is sort of two critical ideas. What is the path that you're taking and where are you going? And these are two distinct things. One is a question of what are the actions that you're undertaking? And the other is what are the ends or the things that you're trying to reach? Now, Another way of articulating this is to think about the distinction between means, M-E-A-N-S, and ends, E-N-D-S. Means are how we do something, and ends are where we're trying to get to. So, a classic way of thinking about the relationship between means and ends comes from Les Miserables, the, 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 the novel and then turned into a musical. And in this, critically, the the question of the musical rests upon this moment of a moral dilemma. Do you steal a piece of bread in order to feed your family? The idea here is that stealing a piece of bread is wrong. So undertaking the action, the means itself, is wrong. But on the other hand, the end, in order to feed your family, may be right. And so what it is that we do and what it is that we're seeking to achieve are not always the same. But one of the things that culture does is it helps define those desirable ends that we want to achieve, what is the place we want to end up at, as well as what are the desirable pathways in order to get to that place? What are the sets of actions that are desirable to undertake? Sometimes we emphasize the actions themselves. So we say, I am going to really, really emphasize my values here. And even if I'm not going to achieve what I want to achieve in the end, I'm simply not going to compromise on my values. Other times we say, you know what? I just need to get there. I need to achieve what I need to achieve And I can't spend time focusing on my values of how to get there. Values be damned. If you've ever heard someone say, the ends justify the means, that is, achieving this outcome justifies the bad things I did in order to get there, what they're partially highlighting is this interrelationship between means and ends, this relationship between the values that we have over how we act in the world and the values we have about what we seek to achieve in that world. Now, we might ask how culture remains stable. And here I would draw upon the the ideas of Elijah Anderson, who is a sociologist, um, 
writing today, uh, who writes about primarily much of his work is about um, black men in Philadelphia. So he's written a series of books about the lives of black men and black families, but primarily black men in Philadelphia. And he talks about with, with these black men code switching, which is probably a phrase you've heard before. And if you haven't, code switching is the idea of how it is that we switch between different symbolic systems or codes. This helps us see how culture is an active process and culture is often situated within different social contexts. Languages and symbols are interpreted differently in different places. So this is gonna foreshadow our later discussion of Pierre Bourdieu. But the idea is that there are sometimes codes of the street, how it is that you navigate a neighborhood and those may be different than codes of work or how it is that you navigate a workplace. This idea of code switching is an idea of how it is that we move between different ways of being in different contexts or situations. And in some ways, it is, deep, it is related to Anne Swidler's insights. Swidler, in one of the most famous articles written in sociology in the last 50 years, um, uh, the article is called Culture in Action, and it was published in 1986 in the American Sociological Review, presents the idea of culture as a toolkit. And she really presents this idea in stark contrast to Weber. So she kind of disagrees with Weber. And she says, you know, Weber's got this idea of culture as values, be that values over how you act or values over where you want to end up, values over means or values over ends. And she says, I don't think this is really how culture works in everyday life. Instead, I think of culture as a toolkit. And if you're going to remember anything about Swidler, it should be that phrase, culture as a toolkit. A toolkit meaning like a set of tools that might exist around your waist as you're doing work or in a box that you draw upon. It's a set of resources that you practically or pragmatically use to solve everyday problems. So think for a moment of tools. There are hammers, and then there are screwdrivers. Hammers and screwdrivers are two different things that allow you to do or act in different ways. Both of them kind of achieve the same end. They attach two objects together, one through nails and one through screws. But the two tools aren't really effective. You can't use a screwdriver with a nail, and you can't use a hammer with a screw. Further, there aren't just hammers and screwdrivers. There are lots of different tools in your repertoire. You may have wrenches, you may have measuring tapes, you may have lots of things within your broad toolkit. Swidler thinks of culture as a set of repertoires, a set of things that we draw upon in order to navigate the everyday world. So the toolkit is the practice of using a cache, an available set of beliefs, values, attitudes, and practices that we deploy in everyday life in different situations. Some tools solve some problems and they don't solve others. Swidler then creates this kind of interactive dynamic between people's agency and the available sets of cultural tools that allow them to move through the world. And some of us draw upon different tools to, to solve different kinds of problems, but often the tools themselves are collectively constituted. That is, there's a way in which the tools that people draw upon to solve their everyday problems are something that are sort of shared, that are collectively constituted as a way in which we act. In this way, Swidler builds in a much more interactive sense of culture than we see within Weber one where, and much more pragmatic, that thinks about the everyday. Again, as I said to you in the opening lectures of this um, series, I don't think that you should consider either of these right or wrong. Instead, both approaches are useful or not for understanding how culture works. In one instance, we think about culture as the values that we have over how we act in the world and the ends that we want to achieve. 
in another. We think about culture as a set of resources that we draw upon in order to navigate the everyday world, resources that we may pick up and put down relative to what we're experiencing in the moment. Both ideas are useful for understanding the inner workings of culture and in some ways the ties between a set of material and symbolic resources and how those help construct a collective representation or understanding of ourselves.